they buy silence. They buy apathy. They buy politicians. In a pessimistic and fearful environment, you're going to fight for your patch. This is a, an industry that has a staggering presence in our economy. Over $408 billion in the last year. Any change or any public apprehension of the issue would cause sales to drop and profits to drop. There's just no question about it. When my eight-month-old grandson showed that he was really smart with a phone, I began to get curious about what we knew about cell phones. And what I found really concerned me. The brain of a child absorbs twice as much radiation as an adult. That's a stunning fact. Few people are aware of it. And we are marketing phones and pushing advertising with E-Trade babies talking into cell phones and children running businesses with little phones. We uh, reviewed all relevant uh, epidemiological studies, finding evidence, particularly coming from the two largest such studies, that uh, wireless phone use was associated with higher risk for glioma, a malignant type of brain cancer, particularly in those who had the most uh, use. I was uh, writing a brain scanning experiment at the University of Pittsburgh. And one evening, one of the subjects didn't show up. We didn't want to waste the precious scanner time. So we decided with my friends and colleagues uh, that I would go into the scanner. I did that and a few minutes later, my best friend, uh, Jonathan, called me from the control room of the scanner and said, uh, David, there's a problem, we're, we're coming in. And he came into the room, he pulled me out of the machine and he put his hand on mine and he said, uh, David, there's something in your brain and we can't do the experiment. And that's how I learned that I had brain cancer. And a few weeks after that happened, of course, I got conventional treatment. Uh, this is what it looks like, many of you uh, know about that. Um, and that conventional treatment saved my life. However, a few years later, as often happens with these kinds of tumors, I relapsed and I had to have surgery a second time. I had to have chemotherapy and I had to have radiotherapy, which again saved my life. Realizing that I knew a lot less than I thought I did, I went to the scientific literature on that question. And what I found baffled me. First, yes, it's true that the vast majority of, of studies that have looked for a risk of cancer with, for people using their cell phones didn't find any. But typically they've looked at less than five or six years of cell phone use. Now think about that two seconds. Some of them looked at less than two years of cell phone use. If you had people smoke two packs of cigarettes a day for five or six years, would you see an increase in the risk of lung cancer? Absolutely not. So you look at these studies that have uh, examined less than six years of cell phone use, you take them, tear them, throw them, you don't even need to read them. They're irrelevant. Now, there's a handful of studies that have looked at 10 years or more of cell phone use. Now, there's too small and there aren't enough of them, so we don't have a definitive answer. But these studies all find roughly a doubling of the risk of brain tumors on the side on which people say they had been using their phone. Now this is a signal. It's not a proof. It's a signal to me that we should be paying more attention to this issue. I had been riding my bike one morning. Um, I came in, I was looking at the newspaper on the kitchen table standing there. All of a sudden I saw lights and I must have passed out because I woke up in the ambulance. The doctors here said there was a tumor present there and that I need to go down to Salt Lake and I went down to Salt Lake and they did tests and proved that it was glioblastoma. I would hold my cell phone here and the tumor was right there. This is our 28 year old son that died in uh, October 11th of 2008 was diagnosed with glioblastoma brain cancer in March of 2008. He lasted seven months and died seven days after his 29th birthday. I was an early adopter. I used a cell phone immediately when it came out. Um, there's a, a lot of good benefits from cell phones. It's not like a cigarette where there's no benefits, and that's one of the more dangerous things about a cell phone. Um, and so I used a cell phone from 1988 um, up until, and I still do use a cell phone, but I use precautions. I never put a cell phone up to my head, ever. 
I text or and or I use speakerphone, and I limit my time to a cell phone. And these are all basic precautions that if I would have been told about over the last 20 years, I wouldn't have found myself with a brain tumor and put my life in jeopardy. Basically, I think it's my moral and ethical duty to inform other people who are not in the know on this issue, as I wasn't for 20 years. And so the manufacturers themselves say, do not place this phone within an inch of your body, and if you are carrying it on you, don't put it in your pocket. It must be carried in our own protective case. But yeah, so I, I don't know anybody who uses the cell phone, the iPhone, and keeps it um, five-eighths of an inch away from the head. The very cell phone companies that are selling us cell phones and telling us that they're safe are at the same time telling us we should hold them an inch from our head. We should wonder what, what exactly does that mean. And in the context of providing more information, indeed just adding a bold mark to information that's already provided by the technology companies, uh, the government isn't restricting anybody's speech at all. It's just making people aware of information that's out there and giving them the opportunity to judge what to do with that information. Keeping the phone at a reasonable distance away from your body substantially reduces the amount of radiation you're being exposed to, and it's a factor of the square of the distance. So the difference between keeping the phone like one inch from your brain and 10 inches from your brain is not just a factor of 10 in terms of the reduction, it's 10 squared of, or it's a hundredfold reduction. Uh, just simply keeping it a reasonable distance away from your body. You also have to worry about where you keep the phone on your body when you're carrying it around, particularly if you're a male, you keep it in your pocket. There's at least eight studies that I have found that have shown evidence of sperm damage. When you separated out the studies that were directly or indirectly funded by industry, meaning manufacturers and carriers and so forth, it was, there was a very compelling case that very limited cell phone exposure, and when I say cell phone, I mean cell phone, GSM, I think it was 900 megahertz cell phones, one hour could negatively affect, severely negatively affect, uh, sperm morphology, meaning shape, motility, meaning swimming direction, doesn't do you very much good if they're going the wrong way, and that was one hour. How long is that sitting in your pocket a day? 10 hours, 12 hours. It didn't even occur to me that there would be any issue, and the lab results came back, which they always do, because they're checking the sample, they were like, this is actually not a good sample. What do you mean it's not a good sample? Sperm count's not that great, buddy. Uh, let's take a look. And I was, I was just flabbergasted. And then over time, because tests are error prone, most tests can have errors. So I, I never make a decision based on one test. I always repeat it. So I repeated, and over time, it just got lower. And this freaked me out, I think, with good cause. And um, that's why I became very interested in this and realized that even among healthy males in industrialized countries, the sperm counts are lowering something like 1% a year and has been for 20 years. So I, I very strongly believe that of men, let's just say 30 to 35 right now, who aim to have kids in the next five years, I would say at least 20% are going to have difficulty conceiving, at least minimum, bare minimum. If there is even a small possibility that the thermal or piezoelectric effect or other pulse electromagnetic field influences could even remotely influence the behavior, biology, and possible carcinogenicity uh, in this setting, I would urge people to avoid exposure. I, I, I actually believe that radiation beyond a certain level is dangerous to the body in certain ways. And the truth is that um, the way experimental research is done, all they, all they can say is in a certain experiment, it definitely was a carcinogen. I just come from just a point of view of what I've read and what, you know, I've read that sound like scientific results and where my thinking is. I'm not pro cell phone next to the head. Do not put your phone up to your ear because it could fry your brain. There's the phone, there's the earpiece, and just, just keep, the, keep the phone away from the body. It could be like the early days of cigarette smoking. Is it true? It could be. No, well, come very, on. A, you know, very no few cases. Proof there was an unfortunate really a incident out in situation. Iowa. Oh, Look, gentlemen, have. practice these words in front of the mirror. Although we are constantly exploring the subject, currently there is no direct evidence that links cell phone usage to brain cancer.